This evening we'll be again talking about housing and neighborhoods. This is just a quick uh, summary of the principal topics within this chapter. On the 1st of April, the Murfreesboro 2035 Task Force heard an overview of draft chapter 5, housing and neighborhoods. Principal topics in the chapter include affordability, housing and transportation cost, and livable neighborhoods. There's a jobs to housing kind of imbalance, we believe, in Murfreesboro as far as uh, where people are living compared or residing compared to where they're working. Translation, Murfreesboro is a commuter community living in the borough and working in Nashville. Kendig Key's collaborative planner Aaron Tooley says the imbalance impacts housing affordability. Guiding principles in the draft report include the following, fair and equitable housing, infill development and redevelopment, opportunities for greater mix of housing types, initiatives to develop affordable housing, and promoting multimodal connectivity. Uh, we believe that it's very important that housing and uh, mixed use areas are, are, are uh, developed simultaneously to where people can walk, create, we c one can create more walkable communities. Providing park space and recreation areas in all newly developed neighborhoods within one quarter mile walking distance. Providing neighborhood environments that promote safety and social well-being and fostering development of housing topologies in neighborhoods that support all stages of life. So those are some of the key principles that this chapter is based on. The chapter includes an analysis of the city's zoning districts with an eye on how much remaining land is available for residential development. You can see that the 4,000 foot parcels, which is a much smaller lot, they're totally uh, developed. Uh, RS-15, there's about 15% remaining to develop. 35 percent of land remains for residential development. 21 percent of land remains for multifamily development. Currently of all development, 9 percent is dedicated to multifamily. Majority of the vacant residentially zoned land f falls within the PRD and PUD districts and a positive aspect of that is there's a little bit more flexibility that developers can have with various types of housing. National demographic trends reveal a decrease in married couple households with a significant increase in so-called non-family households. So you have a different demographic uh, that, that are looking for different types of housing. The average household size has decreased from four in 1940 to three, specifically 2.59 in Murfreesboro. And median age of those first married is increasing to 26 for women and 28 for men. Children living with mothers only has increased, while significant numbers are single with no children, all with different housing options. And as a result, they're looking for a, a potentially a different type of housing type. Potentially, the city has a significant amount of land surrounding the historic downtown square for redevelopment, providing the city wants to move more toward urban style living. We're going to need some land, not only within the city limits, but within the planning area, which is the city limits plus the urban growth boundary. With population growth projected at 228,000 by 2035, what will the housing needs be in 20 years? And that was calculated at 88,000 housing units, which equates to 42,958 additional units. It's one thing to project how many and what types of units will be needed. It's another to analyze affordability, HUD defines it as cost burdened and extremely cost burdened. Cost burden refers to households that spend over 30% of their monthly income on housing. And extremely cost burden refers to households that spend over 50% of their monthly income on housing. Households that spend too much on housing have less to spend on other necessities, food, health care, clothing, transportation. With respect to Murfreesboro, nearly a third of homeowners with a mortgage are classified as cost burdened. With respect to renters, we found that 52.4% of renters in Murfreesboro are cost burdened, and that has increased 8.2% since 2000. While affordability and stretching oneself too thin means different things to different people, households, families, and singles are always looking for affordable options. Planners propose a strategy of either mandating affordable housing developments or incentivizing affordable housing. 
This might include zoning code changes. So the first initiative is consider amending the zoning code to require that a specific percentage, say 15 to 20 percent, of units in, the, in a PRD or PUD district be reserved for affordable housing in exchange for density bonuses. Another analysis looks at trade-offs or choices people make between living near or far from work. Moving further out to have more affordable housing, the offset is that transportation costs are often higher. You're, tr you're driving more to get to the places that you need to go, whether it's work, amenities, schools, whatever. The Center for Neighborhood Technology's Housing and Transportation Affordability Index argues no more than 45 percent of monthly income should be devoted to housing and transportation costs. Based on that 45 percent threshold, both Murfreesboro and Rutherford County, on average, the residents are spending more than they need to on housing and transportation. Murfreesboro housing may be considered affordable by many, but if their jobs require a 30-minute or more commute, transportation costs often offset perceived savings. So it's just, it's just another thing to consider that um, housing really needs to be considered with transportation because um, your amenities are accessible whether you're close or you need to drive. In 1929, planner Clarence Perry conceived the notion that everything should be walkable within a quarter mile, promoting the idea of neighborhood schools with churches, civic centers, and commercial retail areas. New urbanists are rebirthing and modifying this idea. Through this lens, planners looked at West Murfreesboro's walkability. Concentration of commercial here, but it's not like you have, it's not like you can walk to a grocery store to get some sugar or, or some milk or something like that. Auto-centric residential developments are becoming less attractive in the new urbanism. Downtown Murfreesboro could potentially become an attraction for this old, now new, lifestyle trend. You have a much smaller lot size but it's very navigable, uh, which, which reduces traffic congestion significantly. 75% of the area includes sidewalks conducive to walking to stores and parks. Smaller lot sizes, however, may require new ways of thinking about housing size, micro housing units and small cottage style homes. They're perfect like starter homes for an individual or for a young couple to live Vacant lots near the downtown square could become an affordable housing trend, preserving the existing neighborhood's character while also enhancing quality. And they come in a variety of, uh, you know, floor plans. You know, they're still small, but they can be two stories. Planners readily admit the issues are complex, but making livable communities requires a variety of housing types to satisfy a variety of lifestyle needs and desires. It's not like you're growing them all here. It's they're coming here. They want to live here. Mike Browning, City TV.